My name is Dr Marion Duggan and I'm Director of Studies Criminology as well as Senior Lecturer in Criminology at the University of Kent. I'm going to be talking to you today about our programme, uh, some questions you might have had, were we to be having the open day under normal circumstances, it's a real shame not to be meeting you, that's one of the really good things about the open day, you get to see people's excitement and enthusiasm for learning criminology. But hopefully um, I'll be able to address some of the questions you might have. Uh, if you do have any further questions after this presentation or anything from the virtual day, uh, feel free to get in contact with us and we can answer those for you. So in this presentation, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of criminology at Kent. You'll already have looked at the website. You'll see the kind of um, degree programme we offer, opportunities we offer, entry requirements, etc. So this presentation is just designed to give you a little bit more of a flavour about what it might be like to be a criminology student at Kent. So obviously you're interested in criminology because you might be interested in crime, uh, criminal behaviours, why people do what they do, what we do with people once they've done what they did. Um, and these are all things that we'll look at in a range of ways across the degree. Um, and a starting point that we often uh, begin with in relation to understanding crime and how we come to conceptualise crime is to break it down into these different ways of looking at it. So crime is a social construction. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean that sometimes some acts become criminal at some points in time or in some places and other times they're not. So you'll mostly be too young to remember, but your parents likely won't be. Uh, smoking in pubs used to be fine, permitted, used to be OK. A long time ago, smoking in university used to be fine, permitted, OK. Uh, but laws changed, so now it's illegal to smoke indoors in certain premises. Uh, these were largely for health and safety reasons, but doing so, breaking this law could get you a criminal record. Smoking outside isn't seen to be a problem uh, in most places, depending on where they are. So it's not necessarily always the behaviour, but the point in time or the specific aspects of that behaviour that are regulated. Um, and people's behaviours then tend to change in line with them. Also, we have the converse. So uh, up until the mid 60s, late 60s, homosexuality was largely criminalised. Um, until a lot of social efforts to change the criminal sanctions around homosexual identities. And now we have a society that very actively and very publicly engages in gay pride parades, gay visibility, really different set of circumstances to those preceding decriminalisation efforts. Crime is also a product of religious authority and doctrine. Uh, in some countries, something like adultery might be seen as criminal and heavily sanctioned. In other countries, abortion. In other countries, um, bigamy, polygamy, like multiple marriages. Whereas in some countries, they're more liberal, more relaxed, uh, might have a different view of these same behaviours according to the norms and customs of those countries. Crime is also a reflection of nation state legality. Obviously, we have a kind of trajectory from democratic through to very dictatorial nation states, countries, heads of government. And this can often be reflected in their um, norms, their practices and their regulations and their crimes. Freedom to protest, for example, um, state sanctioned violence, for example. And crime is derived from social and political theory. The way in which we understand acts as harmful or to be prohibited often aligns with political ideas and political ideologies at the given time. The more conservative that your government is, perhaps the more repressive or uh, draconian their ideas might be. The more liberal your government is, perhaps the less draconian their ideas might be. So these are some things we would look at throughout the course of the degree. So you'll be familiar with criminology, um, obviously, because you're looking into it, but you might not be familiar with the range of programmes we offer. So there isn't too much difference um, in relation to these. You will be taught similar things, but it's just very much where you want your degree to take you, um, what you're most interested in. 
So we have single honours criminology, where obviously all of the criminology options and cores are open to you, so the different modules, and you can choose accordingly. And I'll talk a little bit about that on the next slide. However, you can also do a joint degree. Now, this doesn't mean you do double the amount of work of it for everybody else, um, but it means that your degree is split between the two parts in which you're interested. So you do criminology and sociology or social policy or quantitative research or cultural studies, and you would have modules that were designated from both subjects, and then you can choose optional modules from across both subjects too. If you're interested in law and criminology, currently that sits in the law school. Um, it's predominantly uh, law focused and um, it's something that we could talk more about in direct communication. So our degree programme. Uh, currently, we have a clear split between stages one, two and three or years one, two and three. And you'll notice on the slide that the level of flexibility and the degree of personal choice that you get increases as you go through the degree. So in the first year, we indicate the kinds of core knowledge, foundational, introductory knowledge that you need, both about criminology and also about critical thinking, um, writing skills, understanding, arguing, debating, etc. So you'll have uh, what we call core modules, so ones that are integral and important to the degree, but you'll also have a number of optional modules, which means you can choose things that suit your personal taste or what you might be interested in learning. In second year, again, there's core modules, but they span across the year. And this is where we teach you more um, practical or theoretical or uh, research focused skills and, and information in order to really start shaping your criminological imagination. So you'll do a module like Criminal Justice in Modern Britain that will introduce you to a wide range of criminological issues and will also feed into you being able to make your choices a third year. Uh, the Sociology of Crime Deviance, you'll be introduced to a wide range of criminological theories dating back from 1700s in order to see some of the factors informing and sustaining those political ideologies I spoke about earlier. In social research methods, we will teach you um, both quantitative and qualitative research skills, allowing you to both be more critical and aware of the types of knowledge being produced by other people's research and the validity of this, as well as how to conduct your own research, if indeed it's something you want to do in third year. So in the third year, you get the opportunity to do a dissertation. At Kent, it's optional, so it's not compulsory element. So you can put those research skills to the test. And you also choose the range of, of modules that you're interested in to make up the rest of the year. And these can range from within criminology. So you'll see some of them there, gender crime, criminal justice, terrorism, modern society, um, violence, youth, policing, uh, criminology and visual methods. And these are things that you will really um, design your own idea of what you want to come out with in relation to your degree. So what type of a, a criminologist do you want to be upon graduation? You'll also see we've got the module there, uh, Inside Out Prison Exchange Programme. Um, that's where we have a really exciting programme where we take 15 Kent students um, and 15 students who are based in Swaleside in the Isle of Sheppey, a prison. Uh, and we teach them together as a, a, a cohort, a, a unit. Um, hopefully that'll still be going ahead in light of everything that's going on in terms of the pandemic, but um, certainly by the time you get to third year, it should be. So who will be teaching you? Uh, it's really exciting to have such a dynamic and vibrant staff team. So you'll have seen on our web pages, everyone's profile, but it might be hard to discern exactly who the criminologists are. Um, there's 11 dedicated criminologists teaching at Kent. Here you can see some of our books. Uh, it seems to be like blue is quite a, a criminological colour. Um, and important thing to remember is that we're very actively engaged in research and several of us are also actively engaged in wider criminal justice practice. So, for example, my area is domestic violence, hate crime, gender based violence, sexual violence. Um, and I am uh, very much involved in trying to address, shape and inform policy around these areas. So I sit as a trustee in our local domestic violence charity. I've been working with the Law Commission around the upcoming 
um, changes or proposals around hate crime. We also have members of staff who've come directly from the Ministry of Justice into teaching, who work very closely in areas of like terrorism, youth crime, gang crime, um, knife culture, etc. Um, or policing, both training of police and the understanding of differences in police culture. So really active and engaged staff base who bring that into their teaching. So very much specialists or experts in their areas. And of course, you'll be learning directly from them using their own texts. So as I mentioned, our teaching is really great. If you don't believe me, we've uh, won lots of awards, which is fabulous. Um, these have been teaching awards for both the programme and also specific elements within the programme. Teaching awards for particular staff who've been nominated by students as being inspirational, or going above and beyond, or having a profound impact on their learning. So we're very mindful to ensure that our teaching stays up to speed and current, but also stretches you as a, a learner. So as well as lectures and seminars and workshops and field trips, we'll embed different ways of understanding, learning and drawing on a wider cultural dynamic in order to understand and advance your knowledge of criminology. Uh, our assessments try to address this as well. So um, we have things like essays and exams, as you'll probably come to expect from different universities. But we also try to get students to think about expressing themselves differently. So that might be through portfolios, documentaries, reflective diaries, presentations, doing projects that really hones your group skills, uh, in-class multiple jobs, which are very popular because um, usually the revision for that is more like a pub quiz. So it, it very much emulates a pub quiz. That was what one of the teaching prizes, I believe, was for. Um, reflective reports and critical reviews. So the kind of things that you might have to do when you go into work, um, like a range of writing skills, communication skills, understanding, analytical skills, they're the types of things we've embedded into the degree at Kent. You'll likely be interested to know what our students go on to do after they finish at Kent. There's the obvious choices. A lot of students come who are interested in going into the police or working in prisons, probation, um, other areas of like criminal justice, direct interaction with people who have offended or committed crime. Uh, but we also have a range of students who are interested in the kind of wider areas of criminal justice. So that might be working with people at risk of harm or at risk of entering into the criminal justice system. Um, with victims, um, with people who are working to try and effect positive change in communities or in special interest groups, alongside students who are interested in things like policy development, um, working in that legal domain, working more on a kind of background or behind the scenes aspect. So there's quite a range there and we try to facilitate and encourage students to think as widely as possible around where their degree may take them. Um, we also offer opportunities such as study abroad, which obviously for the coming year will be on slight hiatus, uh, given everything that's going on. Um, and we can facilitate students who have volunteering placements to embed these into their degree as and when they might be interested to do so. So while we don't offer work placements as such, we can work with the student who has a placement um, in order to integrate it into their academic studies by virtue of a, a module or working some assessments around it. So employability is important to us. Um, you coming out of your degree with both criminological skills and knowledge, but also an idea of what you might want to do with it is also something that we take very seriously at Kent. I hope that's uh, giving you some sort of an overview of our degree of um, how we approach criminology. I'd be happy to take any questions if you want to send them through to me. My name is Marion Duggan. My email address is m.c.duggan, d-u-g-g-a-n, at kent.ac.uk. Otherwise, contact any of the facilitators for today and they can pass on your queries to me. Uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you one day at Kent in the future. Bye.